Mass or inertia element is assumed as a rigid body. It can have kinetic energy as long as there is a velocity change of its body. Let's say we have an object which is a rigid body having mass m and second mass moment of inertia j. And we have the center of gravity, let's say, is here at point A. So the object is moving to another location, B, with velocity V. Okay. So then the kinetic energy of the object is defined by a half M multiplied by V squared. Or if we know the distance between A and B, This can be written as a half m dx over dt square. Or in short form, we just written it as a half m x dot square. There are two things to note here. The first is that the motions involve the displacements of the center of gravity, which is from A to B. So therefore, if you know an object has the center of gravity displaced by x, then straightforward we have the kinetic energy of half m x dot square. The second one is that in this case, there is no rotations when the rigid body is moving. Means the body moves only in translational motions from A to B. Because there is no rotations, that's why we don't include the second mass moment of inertia in the kinetic energy. Now consider the same rigid body, but now instead of moving from one point to another, the body is only rotating around its center of gravity, say with angular velocity omega. Because the body has second mass moment of inertia j, so therefore the kinetic energy is defined by a half j omega square. If we know the angular displacements of the object, let's say theta, so the kinetic energy is a half j d theta over dt square, or a half j theta dot square. So remember that in this case, we have the center of gravity is not moving because the center of gravity is the, the center of rotations of the object. So therefore, we don't have any mass component here, only the second mass moment of inertia. And we don't have any uh, linear displacement, only theta, which is rotational displacement. So this type of motions, we call it rotational motions. Now what about if the body has the center of gravity moving from A to B? Let's say by distance x. But along the way, it rotates with rotational displacement theta. So the question is, what is the kinetic energy? The kinetic energy in this case is first coming from the translational motion, which is a half mx dot square. And the second is coming from the rotational motion, which is a half j theta dot square. Therefore, remember the concepts. If we have the center of gravity moving by x, so we have the kinetic energy half m x dot square. If the body is rotating with displacement theta, so we have a half j theta dot square. Now let's look at an example of a rotating beam. This is a uniform beam having mass m and second mass moment of inertia j. Because the beam is uniform, so we know that the center of gravity is exactly at the middle of the beam. Now, if the center of rotation is not at the middle, but somewhere, somewhere here, 
and the beam is rotating with translational displacement theta. So what is the kinetic energy of the system? Remember that the system has rotational motion, so straightforward we have a half j theta dot square. So what about the kinetic energy from translational motions? Again, remember, as long as we have the center of gravity displaced from one point to another, then we have the translational kinetic energy. So let's say here, if the displacement of the center of gravity is xc, so the kinetic energy from the translational motions is a half m xc dot square. Let's say we have the center of rotations is now exactly at the middle of the beam, which is at the center of gravity. So what is the kinetic energy now? We still have the component of rotation, so we still have that a half j theta dot square. But now we don't have any center of gravity moving from one place to another. So, xc is zero. So what we have is we don't have that component anymore, and we left only with half j theta dot square. Still with the uniform beam, where we have the center of gravity at the middle of the beam, and we have the center of rotations away from the center of gravity with rotational displacement theta and the center of gravity has say the translational displacement xc the beam has m kilogram mass and second mass moment of inertia j now at the end of the beam, we put another rigid mass, say with M capital kilogram. And the displacement of the mass is Xm. So what is the total kinetic energy of the system? From the beam, we have the kinetic energy from translational motions of the center of gravity, so a half M xc dot square and also we have the rotation so a half j theta dot square so now we have another mass having translational motions xm so we just simply add a half m xm dot square note that we assume small vibrations because it is small vibration, so we can apply the concept of linearization. So please go back to my video that explain the concept of linearization, where you, we, can, we can relate xm to theta or xc to theta. So let's move this one a little bit down here. Okay, so if, if we know that the distance between the center of rotation to the center of gravity, where we have the displacement xc is l over 4 and we have the distance between the center of rotations to the mass at the end of the beam is 3l over 4 so with the concept of linearizations we get xc is l over 4 theta and xm is 3l over 4 theta okay so if you want to express this kinetic energy in terms of theta instead of xc and xm so we can just simply substitute xc and xm into these equations so therefore we're going to have a half m L square over 16 theta dot square plus a half j theta dot square plus a half m capital 
9 L square over 16 theta dot square okay guys so this is how to derive the kinetic energy from the mass inertia elements in a vibrating system so this technique will be useful when we try to derive the equation of motion from a vibrating system so we will discuss this one in the next chapter single degree of freedom system free vibrations and force vibrations okay so see you in my next video bye bye